A Bryant High School student is facing an attempted murder charge for choking another student. Police say Cornelia Smith was seen on video choking a 17-year-old girl in the school parking lot. The girl's mother says they don't know if she actually passed out, but she was taken to the nurse and was fine. The mom says they will not be pressing charges and that the whole situation has been blown out of proportion. The funeral for a Batesville man who was killed in a hit and run in Nashville is today. Corey Taylor's visitation will begin at 10 at Compass Church in Batesville. The funeral will start at 11. He'll be laid to rest at Kyler Cemetery. Police say over the weekend, a 17-year-old led them on a chase in a stolen car and then hit Taylor, who was walking on the sidewalk. The U.S. Marshals are looking for the Arkansas native behind a 3D printed gun company. He's accused of paying an underage girl for sex. Cody Wilson faces a felony charge for sexual assault. The victim says he gave her $500 after they had sex at a Texas hotel. Police say Wilson has been in Taiwan but hasn't come back. Officers are working with international law enforcement to find him. We have new information in Tuesday night's chase ending when the suspect hit a train. Pulaski County deputies say Ozell Smith was driving a car with no headlights and no license plate. When a deputy tried to pull him over, Smith drove away. The chase was called off, but then deputies ran into Smith again moments before he hit a train on Fraser Pike. He was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. He is now facing several charges. Well, it's been over a month since a suspect shot a Northeast Arkansas police chief while responding to a call. He returned fire, killing the suspect. Yeah, for the first time, Truman Police Chief Chad Henson is sharing his story. He's speaking exclusively with Fox 16's Tyler Thomason in Poinsett County. It was back on August 3rd. People here in the town of Truman reported hearing gunfire. Little did they know it was a shootout involving their chief of police and an armed suspect. The armed suspect was shot and killed at the scene. The chief of police, Chad Henson, he survived. And as of about a week and a half ago, he's back to work. He explains to me what keeps him coming back after experiencing something like that. Chief Henson, sorry to hear about your incident. The cards line his desk. And again, this one comes from California. Support poured in from around the country for Truman Police Chief Chad Henson. The 22-year lawman returned to work last week yeah, after getting shot in the chest last month. He returned fire at the scene, killing the armed suspect, Johnny Kelly. Yeah, I just remember laying on the ground and just worrying about the people that's going to arrive, uh, having to call my son. He tells me he called his 16-year-old boy from the bed of the emergency room. Just to hear his voice was, you know, peace for me. Since then, his view from behind the badge includes a new perspective. Oh, Lord, it's, um, you know, a second chance at just everything. It gives me, uh, uh, you know, that other chance to go out there and have another chapter to my life. The recovery has taken time, but Henson says coming back to this line of work is ingrained in him. As for Johnny Kelly's family, Henson hasn't spoken with them since the shooting, but had this to say. I, I would have a lot of sympathy and a lot of empathy because I have family members that have uh, been like Johnny. A police officer don't, does not ever want to do this. And that was Tyler Thomas reporting, Thomason reporting. Chief Henson was cleared for his role in the shooting, and yesterday he received a brand new bulletproof vest thanks to donations from the community. Changes coming for our men and women who wear the badge here in the capital city. The Little Rock Police Department has officially started a wellness program for its officers. The push made by Chief Kenton Buckner will give officers resources that will assist with mental health. Chaplains, peer-to-peer -peer counseling, and mental health professionals will be readily available. In, in this day and age, you know, what we do is stressful. Uh, and we can't take anything for granted uh, as far as the wellness is concerned. We have, uh, it's a collaborative effort. Officer Henry Moore added that they are working with other first responders like MIMS and the Little Rock Fire Department on similar programs. Volunteers with Tyson Foods are in North Carolina preparing meals for people in disaster zones. Tyson's Meals That Matter mobile relief truck and three trailer trucks carrying 100,000 pounds of food headed 
east yesterday. The Springdale-based company has set up a cooking site at a Walmart in Fayetteville, North Carolina, to hand out food to Florence victims and responders. These folks have so much more to worry about right now than just where their next meal is uh, going to come from. So if we can, uh, if we can help them out a little bit in that way uh, and provide that hot meal and take a little bit, you know, off their plate by putting something on it, then uh, we're so happy to do that. The Tyson Disaster Relief Team will be in North Carolina for more than a week.